is anyone safe when black vengeance raises its destructive head? It's Will. It's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, welcome and thank you for finding us. I hope you're doing well. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you like our content. We are on the road to 7,000 subscribers. So if you are not subbed and you could sub, that would be hugely appreciated. Thank you so, so much. We started out this year with like 4,000. It is mind blowing to me that like our next big milestone is 7,000. That's insane. My maximum goal for our all of our channels combined, which would be YouTube, uh, we have the Instagram account and the Facebook group was 5,000. And now if you combine all those accounts, we have like, I think 70,000 up thereabouts. This has been an insane journey. So let's jump right into this video and a quick shout out to our patrons too, who financially support the channel through Patreon. You can sign up for $2 a month, $5 a month. I do exclusive videos in there. Early release, wicked early release, all kinds of stuff. What are we talking about today? It is the double feature I am most excited about. Maybe. Well, okay, the election double feature came out too. It is one of my most anticipated releases and one of my most anticipated. If you're wondering why I'm holding this in front of my face, I'm just like I'm recording with a webcam now. I typically record with my phone and I'm trying to get like figure out where the focus is because I want you to see how awesome this glorious artwork is from Gokaiju. There you go. So uh Rich and Famous and Tragic Hero, these are two films from 1987. I would call these Hong Kong classics. I don't know if I'd use the word masterpiece. I had so, so much fun rewatching these films. Tragic Hero is a favorite of mine, which I've talked about a lot on this channel. Rich and Famous is a film I had seen like two or three times before that I kind of had previously talked about thinking was not quite as good as Tragic Hero and not being like in my top fifth tier of heroic bloodshed or Chinese fat or anything like that. I loved rewatching this movie. It is so much better than I remembered. The as like a three and a half hour massive single piece, these movies work so so well. They stand alone really well. They're very different films, but as one massive arc, they're freaking phenomenal. So I'm going to talk about that. Like I said, this came out in 1987. Uh, Tragic Hero came out first, even though chronologically it's the second film in the series that was released in February of 1987 in Hong Kong, and then in May of 1987, uh, Rich and Famous came out. Interestingly enough, Rich and Famous made more money even though Tragic Hero was the one that the studio thought was going to do better, which is why they released it first. Taylor Wong directed these films. Taylor Wong uh, originally came from doing old school martial arts films. He did Buddha Palm. I'm just checking my notes here to make sure I don't get anything wrong. And then he did Triads, The Inside Story with Chow Yun-Fat, and he did No Risk, No Gain, which I think is a Casino Raiders um, sequel. But um, uh, this has got to be Taylor Wong's magnum opus. This was produced, also worth pointing out, by Johnny Mock, who directed Long Arm, Long Arm of the Law, excuse me, which is one of my all-time favorite Hong Kong movies. This releases out on July 24th of 2023. If you are a fan of heroic bloodshed films, if you are a fan of Chai Yun-Fet, if you are a fan of Hong Kong thrillers, of Hong Kong action films, of action dramas, of John Woo, of Ringo Lam, and you have not bought this yet or pre-ordered it, I'm not exactly sure when this video is going to come out, but shout out to Eureka for sending this to me uh, early so that I could do this review and get it up before the release date. Um, it, just buy this. Like, this is just pure freaking joy from front to back. Amazing bonus features, amazing movies, amazing remaster, fantastic audio options. Like, this is one of my favorite releases of the year. Uh, I'm sure, I like, I would bet money on it right now. This is going to be in my top 10 releases of the year for sure, maybe top five. Like, this is one of the the like in terms of pure pleasure, love of cinema, just joy, happiness at being able to watch these movies in the best releases, the best editions. This has been one of the best like movie watching experiences of me for the year so far. Let me show you uh, what you get with this. So there's the slip case and then you pop it out. So each film has artwork. So the, the front artwork is the tragic hero artwork. Uh, and then this is the rich and famous artwork. And then if you turn around on the back, then there's the tragic hero artwork. Both of the original posters for the film are uh, on the kind of reversible thing there. So you can see there's one. And then if I pop the disc out, there's the other one there. And the discs are presented as so rich and famous in red and tragic hero in black, which is appropriate because the alternate title for that film is Black Vengeance. And then you get an essay here. Uh, in the limited edition booklet 
which is written by James Oliver, and it's called To Live and Die in Hong Kong. And he talks about the heroic bloodshed genre, how it was really kind of brand new when this movie came out because, uh, you know, Better Tomorrow came out in 1986 and it was really kind of ground zero for these films. And um, how kind of like mature and and focused and this film is given that, the, you know, the genre was kind of brand new in a way and, you know, talk, contextualizing it within the history of Hong Kong cinema, the careers and everything like that. So um, for me, this I love this slipcase and the artwork, like I said, is by Go, Go Kaiju. So if you're waffling on whether you not or not you want the limited edition one, I would say go for it. Just have this really cool slipcase here. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about what these movies are about. The, the first movie, Rich and Famous, takes place over multiple decades, 50s, 60s, 70s. It starts in 1953, I believe. And it gives you this kind of historical context of immigrants coming from China into Hong Kong. And there's this guy who's like, a, he's a dad. So he has a son and then he's got his son's cousin, which I guess would be his niece, right? And they come to Hong Kong from China. And I don't know if the, the mother passed away or she just didn't make the trip with them. I don't think they really talk about that. And he comes to find, a, I think, who's a friend of his or maybe a cousin. I don't, I, don't, I don't know the exact relationship between them, but he comes to find this guy in Hong Kong and the guy is dead and the guy has a son. So this man takes in that kid. So he ends up kind of raising these three kids together and they're kind of like siblings. But the actual relationship is he has his son who is played by Alex Mann as an adult. Then he has the kid he who who had the, his, has the dead father who he adopts, played by Andy Lau as an adult. And then um, Pauline Young, Wong, excuse me, plays the the niece character, who's like the cousin of the the two guys who are like you know they become brothers because they're you know one of them is the actual biological son of this guy and one is the adopted son. So that's the fifties, and then in the sixties, you see them all as young like adults. I think they're probably supposed to be like around twenty, if I had to guess, or like maybe eighteen. And they're just kind of like trying to figure out what to do with their lives and stuff like that. And the Alex Mann character gets into some gambling debt. And in order to pay that off, the Andy Lau character strikes a deal where they're going to work for the triads. And Chow Yun-Fat becomes their boss. So he plays like the triad leader. And he's from the same area in China that they're from. So he wants to like help them out and stuff like that. And so – it's really, and then it goes into the 70s. So it's this sweeping epic crime drama, really, about these three characters. I'm going to refer to them as siblings, even though they're not siblings, as I established. Basically siblings, these three siblings, as they work their way into and what, what ends up happening with the sister character, the Pauline Wong character, is that she starts working for Chow Yun-Fat as kind of like an assistant slash servant like around his house basically she's just like always there helping him with everything that he needs help with and then the andy lao character he kind of starts to groom as his successor and the alex man character is a little bit of a wild card and so he kind of needs some discipline and some advice and some shaping and stuff like that and there's some conflict there in the second film bit of a spoiler but not really because this is kind of just the setup of the films the alex man character has become his own boss. He's broken from the Chow Yun Fat triad group and started his own group. And they are now kind of at odds with one another. And the, the, like I said, they're very different films because the third film takes place all in the 80s and is a very 80s movie. The second film, in a way, almost feels like a 70s Coppola Scorsese type of crime drama. Whereas the third one is very much like an 80s action heroic bloodshed movie that takes place in a much more compressed time frame. I think it's it takes place when the movie was made. So I think it takes place in 87, which I think is 14 years after the final stuff takes place in the first film. And, and it's just a violent, brutal, like the way I kind of think of these movies is the first film takes tremendous care to set up all the dominoes. And then the finale of the second film is kind of, pushing the first domino and then the second film is just all the dominoes falling down and just chaos and violence and brutality and it kind of has this epic sweep of a tragedy in a way um the the alex man character i i think is one of the greatest villains ever in hong kong cinema i think he's one of the best characters ever too because he's the villain in the second film but he's not in the first film the evolution of his character and this almost kind of inevitable tragedy that comes out of his actions it, the character is so well written i think on paper it's he's more interesting than the other characters and is really the center of this whole epic three and a half hour two film story but 
the way that Alex Mann plays him is just like transcendently incredible. The cast of this film is Chow Yun Fat, it's Andy Lau, it's Karina Lau. Karina Lau plays the love interest of the Chow Yun Fat character in the first one, and then, um, well, you'll watch them and you'll see what happens in the second one. And uh, Pauline Wong, like I said, is fantastic in these films. Danny Lee is in both of these films. Shing Fui On is in both of these films. Like a lot of recognizable faces if you've seen a lot of Hong Kong cinema. Chow Yun-Fat is one of my favorite actors ever. He's one of my favorite movie stars ever. He's one of my favorite action stars ever. Alex Mann, to me, is these movies. Like he takes the cake. He is just freaking ridiculously incredible in these films. It, it's like a performance for the ages. It is a truly great cinematic performance. In the second film, when he's doing all this evil stuff and he's like the head boss gang dude and like he doesn't take shit from anybody and like he's committing all these insane atrocities and stuff like that, in his eyes and in the way that he holds himself, you see the character from the first film. You see the insecurity. You see the sadness. You see the willingness to, to – he really wants to impress people. He wants people to think that he's worth being around, that they that they have him there for a reason, that he's not just there because he's a brother or because he's a friend or because he's from the same part of China or because he's the cousin or the son. or like He wants people to think that he has value. He wants people to love him and to value him. But all of that stems from extreme insecurities and extreme jealousy. He's very, very sensitive. One of the things I think is really fascinating about his character is he's very, very sensitive. And his sensitivities in the world that he's in they don't it doesn't work it it leads him to negative reactions to the things that trigger him the buttons that gets pushed and then he becomes very good at pushing other people's buttons and in the second film he's such an incredible villain because he knows exactly how to poke at people and to needle them and to piss them off to get them to react to him so that he's not so he can say hey i didn't do anything like sure i said something but i didn't start this violence i didn't try to kill it like he always gets other people to start conflict by knowing exactly how to poke them and piss them off he's such a good villain but his performance is so incredible because the layers of character characterization and emotion and the history of the character that he's relaying through his facial expressions his eyes it's just freaking incredible he's a master class of acting this is truly like if i made a list today of my 10 favorite performances in the history of hong kong cinema this would be like top five it would definitely be on the list probably top five this performance is incredible and this character is so good and the kind of the nuts and bolts mechanics of filmmaking are so, so good in these movies. I'm actually going to do a separate video where I look at three subsequent scenes in Tragic Hero, and I break down the craft stuff that they're doing within those scenes to build the tension for the audience and the suspense and like the reversals in the scenes and like the setup and payoff this is all like kind of technical screenwriter talk and stuff like that tension in the the way that screenwriters use the word tension is kind of how the audience would think of like suspense or anxiety or something like that like you're trying to create tension in the audience right and there's a lot of ways you can do that one of them is reversals where you think one thing is going to happen something else happens and you think one thing is going to something else happen. you're you're constantly moving the scenes back and forth between expectations to keep people guessing what's going to happen to create tension right and there's a lot of other ways that you can do this but that's the the, the craft especially in the second film here because the first film is really more of this massive sweeping historical drama whereas the the second film really is like a like a real i won't want to say real times it takes place over like months or whatever but like it takes place in a much more compressed time frame and scene to scene you're getting a direct chronological relationship as opposed to the first one being this epic sweep right so it's like a kind of a cause and effect type of movie you hit me i hit you you hit me i hit you and then it leads to this epic conclusion and uh just that the craft it, scene to scene sequence to sequence in the, especially in the second film to build that tension the the scene work is just so good and th these films like really lean into melodrama they're very directly emotional characters make these very over-the-top sweeping emotional statements there's this really incredible music that like swells up that's this very emotional like 80s synthesizer music right and there's like romantic stories in these films and the, you know, these epic you know relationships of brotherhood and betrayal and it's a very melodramatic film but it really really works it doesn't succumb to the to what you might perceive to be the corniness and the material because the the craft of the filmmaking is at a really high level 
And then on top of that, the acting is just absurd, like world class, you know, Chow Yun Fat, Alex Mann, Andy Lau, Karina Lau, Pauline Wong, like Danny Lee, what else needs to be said? It's acting at the highest caliber. It's filmmaking craft at a really, really high level. And it all ties together to make this really incredible, emotional, sweeping melodrama. But in the second scene, especially, you get amazing action sequences. There's a scene with a van. I don't want to spoil the whole thing, although I do think Eureka posted this scene on on youtube so i think you can go and watch it maybe if you're not sure if you want to buy these movies go to the eureka youtube channel and watch this scene there's a scene where chai and fat is trying to escape from some people and his like bodyguard assistant right hand man dude gets this van and it's it's one of the most bananas action scenes i've ever seen and like the the conclusion to this movie to tragic hero is just insane like these huge explosions that look really really dangerous like really dangerous based on where the stunt guys are and stuff like that and this just epic insane shootout with chai yun fat and andy Lau just going ham on these bad guys like the second one will really really satisfy your action itch it'll really scratch the crap out of it but the first one is this really well done crime drama with really incredible characters relationships like the relationship between the chain fat character and the pauline wong character is so good she's in love with him he's married to somebody else but he really respects and loves her as like a confidant as like almost like a sister as like a really 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 trusted there's one scene um, in the second film where all this kind of dramatic stuff has happened and and he says to her like you're the only person I really trust right now and and so she it, it's this really fascinating relationship because she's in love with him he knows that he's not in love with her his relationship with her is more like a sibling or like a best friend but she they both get what they need out of it because she will always be loyal to him and always be there for him and always help him when he needs it because she's in love with him but she is getting the attention that she needs from him the respect that she needs from him and the affection that she needs from him because he loves her so much but in a different way it's this really fascinating incredible relationship and the relationship between uh, you know, the Alex Mann character and the Andy Lau character is so, so good because Andy Lau has so much respect for the Chai Yun Fat character, but the Alex Mann character is his brother and he loves him so much and he wants to help him so badly. And then the dad, the character of the dad is amazing in his relationships with the kids. And there, in each movie, there's a key scene where the dad kind of intervenes in what's going on and it's really heartbreaking and it's just – it's these movies are so freaking good. And like I said, Rich and Famous is a movie that previous to this rewatching, I was like, I thought was maybe like a, you know, a two and a half out of five, just like perfectly fine, whatever movie. And I, I own the Hong Kong Blu-ray of that movie. I don't know why it never hit me before, but it like floored me on this rewatch. I was like, man, this movie is freaking fantastic and they work so well i had never watched them back to back before don't ask me why i'd never watched the back back before because i've seen both of them multiple times but for some reason i'd never watched these two movies back to back and they just work like like i said they're so different in a way because one is this massive historical drama over three decades and the other one is this relatively contained kind of drama like heroic bloodshed crime drama exploitation it's not really a drama i don't know why i'm saying that word heroic bloodshed exploitation type of film and it's interesting because the second movie definitely has exploitation film characteristics what do i mean by that there's a lot of tragedy that happens in these films the first film is kind of more grounded in the realistic drama of the characters in the second film there are some segments where really tragic things happen and characters don't really react to them but they react to other things it's weird like there's there's really incredible like high level filmmaking dramatic craft in some sequences in the second film but in other scenes sequences there's this very kind of exploitation film type of quality where it's just like scuzzy nasty violence and characters are just like bulldozing ahead blowing each other away not caring about the fallout of anything it, it's an interesting balancing act um like some of this is going to sound completely ridiculous but some of the melodrama in the second film especially even i i just recently watched written on the wind i'm going to plug my podcast it's called movie of the week where mike and i talk about a different movie every week mike being the silent partner in this channel who does all the editing and all the you know everything that the you know, all the thumbnails for youtube and you know prepares all the videos and all that stuff everything that i don't know i basically just sit here and record mike does everything else basically um 
So we watched Written on the Wind, the Douglas Sirk movie, and, and some of the melodrama in Tragic Hero was so like romantic and overblown, and not, not in a negative way, but just like so big and bold and emotional and direct that it reminded me in a way of the Douglas Sirk film. It was really fascinating. So let me give you just a brief, oh, and the music, awesome, very 80s Hong Kong mu- music in here. Uh, I'm going to talk to you very briefly about the bonus material in here, just so you know what you're getting. I'm trying to focus more on the movies when I do these reviews, uh, because I know that other people go into really tremendous detail on the bonus material. And that's not to say that the bonus material is not incredible, but what really impressed me upon rewatching these films is the movies themselves. So there's an interview on the, on this, on the first disc, there's a documentary actually called dub masters, which is from uh, CFK, which is Arna Venema, which is really freaking cool. It's 21 minutes long. And I actually talked to Arna about this a couple of weeks ago. And I was finally able to watch it when I got this release where it's like, it's a documentary on the dubbing industry in Hong Kong. And they talked to the guy who did Chai and Fat's voice. And, and there's like multiple generations of dubbers in here and all these insane stories about like rivalries between dubbing companies, like things you would never expect to be happening in the world of dubbing. That's amazing. Really good documentary, 21 minutes long. And uh, there's, there's Frank Jane commentaries on both films, which obviously is amazing. Cause I love Frank Jane commentaries. I watched uh, both of those movies two times this week so I could listen to Frank's commentary. So I four times I watched I watched the films on this set last week. Um, the second disc has an interview with Michael Mock, who's described as the shadow director. So he worked for Johnny Mock, who was the producer of this film, who was in charge of this company that had this deal with Golden Harvest. It's really interesting, actually. He talks about Working with Johnny Mock, he was a second unit director on Long Arm of the Law, which, like I said, Johnny Mock directed, and his involvement in the company and how the deal with Golden Harvest happened and what what it was like working on these films in particular is really, really cool interview uh, and 33 minutes long. That's a substantial interview. There's 55 minutes of interviews on the second disc. The other interview is with Manfred Wong, the screenwriter. 22 minute uh, long interview, which is really fantastic. So lots of great bonus material, but I just I love these movies. I love these movies. And if you like 80s Hong Kong action cinema, and you don't own this, if you haven't bought it yet, if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, if you haven't seen these films, I urge you as a fan of the films, please go and get them, watch them, get in the comments and talk to me about them because I love these movies so much and I want to talk to people about them. My name is Will, it's Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society. As always, I thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.